What is up, you guys? Do you have a recording that needs fixing? Is the audio you have just not on time like it should be? Well, good for you if you have FL Studio. We've got New Time. Today, you will learn all you need to know to use the New Time plugin. And whether you recorded without a metronome or your favorite take or sample has a timing issue, this is the video for you. Please smash that like button and subscribe. So first things first, we need some audio to deal with. Three, four, one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's some good stuff right there. So we're gonna wanna route to our mixer track. We're gonna open up new time. I am going to drag my sample into new time. And here we are. Now, if you want to learn all the controls in new time, stick with me. But if you just want to know quick and dirty, it loads up with chops. You can add these, you can add these slices or points and just drag them. You can drag them to where you want them to be at. And you can also tell it what you want it to quantize to via this button here. We have it snapped to a quarter beat. We can have no quantization an eighth beat. Doesn't matter. Now, if we play it, That last chord wasn't played that well. And so if we wanted to further come in and fix this, there we go. I added another point, dragged it closer. Now it all plays at once. A Little bit of a click in there, but you could probably get rid of that. Matter of fact, off. Perfect, no more click and it all sounds good. Now, if you want to actually learn all the different cool things you can do with this, we're going to go through it. So if we start top left to bottom, we've got our loop option. As soon as this reaches the end, it'll play over again. This loop button is great for if we want to play with FL Studio, for example. So if I click this slave playback to host button and we click play on FL Studio, They now play together. If I click play on new time instead of FL, it still, it still plays only in new time so we can continue to edit without having to play the entire track. So next thing we have here is tempo. If we click the sync button, it'll jump to whatever the FL studio tempo is in the way that it synchronizes, if that makes sense. So because 78 and 88 are different, it's going to throw us off time. If we, however, type in 88, it is now stretched to 88 BPM and therefore is not off time. And now if we click sync, we get no movement because the two are both at 88 BPM. When you're using the slave playback though, it's always gonna quantize and fit to your sequencer here in the back. Each one of these four is a beat. It's going to fit to that every single time, no matter what the BPM is. So play and stop, easy peasy. We can right click anywhere on this bar and it's going to let us change the tempo. If we look at the save options here, we have new or we can just open a new instance. We can load a sample. If I click this, it'll let me go through any of my folders to pull up an audio file. We can save the sample as. Next thing we have is load groove pattern. And this is something that's wonderful for drums. I've got this drum loop here. Looks really complicated. But what we're gonna do is we're going to load a groove pattern. Now, if I open it here, there's nothing here. But if I click load here, we've got all these different options. So let's go 50 percentile shuffle. Now, as we move this groove knob, you'll see it sliding things around. And this is really good for giving swing to drums. So if I play it, and that's really good for giving that swing and that bounce and feeling to your drums. So if you ever make a drum pattern, don't be afraid to bounce it out into new time as an audio file and add a little bit of a groove to it. And once we've got 
these markers in where we want them and we've got our groove how we want it, we can always save that as a specific option, which will pop up here when we click Load Groove Pattern. As you can see, there's also a Save option. Next thing we have after that is Save Analysis Files. Funny enough, if you actually go into FL Studio's user manual and you go to this section, in the user manual, the guy who was writing the user manual said that he literally has no idea what this is for and that he'd come back and update it later, which I'm sure he's forgotten about by this point. So show him this video because I want to know what that is. And so right under Save Analysis Files, Ignore Host Selection says... Playback will follow the absolute song position in FL Studio. Normally, New Time will align its first bar to the start of the beginning of playlist selections in FL Studio. So I've sat here and messed with this and have not been able to figure it out. So if you can figure that out, then please tell me and show me. Next, ignore own selection. Playback is not limited to the selection in new time. Next, ignore spacebar key. Now this one is actually pretty cool. So let's say I have new time open and I'm trying to edit this with FL Studio. Everything that's going on and playing in FL Studio, I want to edit it with. So if I click space, it's just going to play this. So that means I'm going to have to go here, come back, try and get it open in time, you know, whatever, or click play, but I want to click the space bar. I don't want to click play. It takes too much time to reach over. We're going to go ignore space bar key. So now when I click space, instead of it playing a new time, it plays an FL studio. Wonderful. I love it. That one's useful. <clears throat> Next thing we're looking at, use project tempo and load. Pretty self-explanatory. If we check mark this, then anytime we open something into new time, it's going to use the project tempo, which at this time is 88 BPM. Next, we have edit properties. Edit properties is going to be the same exact thing as right-clicking somewhere in this bar. After that, we've got quantize time which will quantize all these little bits, which just got rid of our groove. So, you know, get out of here with all that. Next thing we have here is snap downbeat. Our green marker here is our downbeat marker. Let's put that somewhere. Let's say I put it here. Now, if I open this and I go snap downbeat, it's going to snap this green marker to our first downbeat or the closest one. And this is good for if you want to align a sample, it's not aligned. Let's say it has a two bar intro, and then it comes into the downbeat. So what I would do is I'd put this green, but hard to see downbeat marker, this one right here, and then I would click snap downbeat, which is going to put the entire sample on time with the downbeats of the song. If you don't know what a downbeat is, if you're counting one, two, three, four, it's going to be your one, two, three, Four. Um, anytime you nod your head, it's on the on the down, whereas an and would be up. One and two and three and four and right down beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. However far up you want to count. Next we have is send a playlist as an audio clip, which is very simple. You click it, and this is gonna get slapped onto the playlist back here. Next option we have is going to be marker detection, transient, or tempo. So we also have none, which is going to get rid of all the markers. Or delete all markers, which is going to get rid of all the markers. So when you click delete all markers, it doesn't change this. If I click transient, nothing happens. So I'd have to click tempo, transient again, and now we're back to it. So now next thing we have here is we're going to have select time around selection. I want you to notice if I click control and drag across the top here, that I can select just like you can in the FL Studio playlist. Now, something else you can do is you can select sections themselves just by dragging control drag, right? Now, I've got these two things selected. In these options up here, we have select time around selection. 
click it, we just selected the time up top around this selection. All I want to select is the center part. We're going to go select time around the selection, and then you have before. So now I've cho chosen everything before that point, or select after. Now I've chosen everything after that point. We can select all times. We can select all, sli all slices, which is down there. And we can also select all time and slices. Next, we have our grid that we're going to snap to, or our quantization. And this is pretty self-explanatory. You can snap to beats, half beat, third beat, quarter, sixth, eighth, and just have it off. So when you drag these, like we've seen before, it's going to snap to those points. Next, we have our undo button. Super simple, easy to know. We're also going to have a send to piano roll. Next, we have our save again, which is going to be the same thing as this. We've got our drag selection, so we can put this to the playlist like that. And we also have our send to playlist button, which does the same exact thing. This drag would be for maybe we want to come in here and drop this into a specific channel or its own channel. So next thing that we have here is our scroll to cursor or scroll to follow cursor. When it's on, if you'll notice, it scrolls to follow it. I turn it off. It does not. I took away all the markers, and if we want to make our own, we can do it two ways. Shift, and see you got this little line here. Pull it where we want it. Click. Or we can just double click in an area. Okay. If we want to get rid of it, we cannot shift click. We'd have to double click to get rid of it. Shift click, put it. Double click, get rid of. And these, we can place wherever we want to be able to stretch it. If we want to make it the downbeat, we would just right-click it. Any marker you right-click will become your downbeat marker, which we've already shown how that will snap the downbeat to the grid. And you may be wondering how to make groove points or groove selections. From what I understand, there's not a way to make the groove points yourself. If you know of a way, please tell me, because I looked in the user manual and I've been messing with this, and I don't know how. So I would say just place your markers about where you want them and then come over here, load your groove, and then start shifting. So that should be about it. We went over the nitty gritty of just getting something in there, having it be sliced, and just adjusting, as well as going from top to bottom, every option, how this interacts with FL Studio, how to make your own markers, quantization options, saving and loading options, and more. If this was helpful and you liked the video, please like the video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio, and adios.